promise is a promise, and a promise must be kept. When my eyes are closed and it's dark, I can still smell the fragrance of my dead wife's skin. Your Majesty, you should not believe the things that your people will tell you about your daughter, especially when she was younger. I was a war hero. I could have had, I could have married any woman. And I chose your daughter, even knowing the vow that she'd taken. I remember her telling me, I was holding her hands underneath the flowering trees, and she said, I will only marry a man who promises that if I die before he does, that, I will, that he will follow me into the grave. Because if he loves me enough to be my husband, how could he possibly want to live without me after I'm gone? And it is not that she did not offer to return the favor if her husband would die before she. She was so beautiful. Our love was incandescent. The wedding was a spectacle, and she burned with love. We both did. Our love lit the heavens with its radiance and its heat. And then she got sick. And then she grew feeble. And then she died. And I remember that last morning before she passed, I sat by her bedside and pulled her and held her hand. And she looked at me and said, Husband, do not forget your vow. <laughs> How could I forget the vow that I would follow her into the grave? And Your Majesty, I remember, you, you locked down the palace and afraid that I would try to escape. But a promise is a promise. A promise must be kept. And I followed her. <laughs> the door to the crypt was shut behind me. My wife, in her wedding dress, once again laid out before me on a stone slab, a small table, with four loaves of bread, four bottles of wine, and four candles. The darkness was bad, but the darkness was not the worst part. The worst part was the smell and the starvation, but truly the worst part was the flies, the sound in the darkness of the flies more and more every day. And I was using the little stub of my last candle when I saw the snake squirming out from the wall of the crypt green. And I could not kill death. I could not kill those flies, but I could kill that snake that had come for my love. And I drew my sword. Dum, dum, dum. Congratulations, I killed a snake. And so when the other snake slithered out from the wall, saw its dead brother and slithered back, I did nothing. But it returned. It returned with three leaves in its mouth. And as I watched, it put one leaf on each of the wounds I had given the other snake. And in seconds, the dead snake was whole. And the two slithered away back into the wall and left those three leaves behind. You can imagine what I did. As I felt my wife's life quicken within her breast, I could smell cold corpse stink of her breath. I could feel something squirming beneath her skin, but she was back with me and she was whole. And the sound we made hammering on that door must have woken the entire palace. The celebrations were wonderful. But I don't know if it's that not all of her came back from the grave to me or if something came back with her. Because before, when we had incandescent love, there was nothing but icy, cold disdain and an unnatural passion. I thought travel might make it better. We would go by ship to visit my father on the other side of the sea. But she did not choose to spend her nights with me on that ship while she slaked her lust in the ship's captain. And it was on the third night that I felt hands 
grabbed me. I knew that my servant was around someplace, he who I had given those three leaves to hold. But I was dragged up to the top of the deck, and my wife stood there by the rails, and the storm whipped the waves above the bow. And I looked at her and I said, do not forget our vow. And she laughed, your daughter laughed, your majesty. And I felt myself flying through the air and into the water. That is all I remember. When I awoke, there was something <coughs> in my eyes and on my mouth. And I opened my eyes to see my servant. He told me what had happened when he saw me go overboard. He stole one of the small ship, small rowboats off the ship, rowed after me, found my body, and put the leaves upon my eyes. Together, we rode back to see you. As day and night, both of us, as fast as we possibly could. And by the grace of God and by the currents, we are here before your daughter and that treacherous captain. Ah, I see the donkey. She's coming up the road, the captain beside her, her face fixed in a false appearance of grief. It almost looks like you can see something squirming beneath her skin, even from here. But she had asked that I would follow her into the grave when she died, and I did because I loved her. And I died, and she did not follow me into the ocean. Her Majesty, a promise is a promise, and a promise must be kept. Thank you.